Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Welcome back to my class This is the third meeting uh, We're going to talk about the hierarchy of English language teaching curriculum in Indonesia Well, I believe you still remember that there is a difference between curriculum and syllabus in our first meeting uh, Curriculum is actually the regulation by the government So everything is prescriptive All the teacher must follow the regulation made by the government in the curriculum. Especially in Indonesia, the education system is uh, regulated in Undang-Undang number 20, year 2003. And then uh, the education system must follow the eighth standard of national education. This eighth standard of national education is regulated in Undang-Undang number 9, uh, year 2005. So what are the eight national standards of education? They are the first standard kompetensi lulusan or basic competence standard. And then the second is standard isi or content standard. And then the third standard process or process of teaching standard. And then the fourth standard PTK or standard uh, pendidik dan tenaga pendidikan. So all teachers and uh, workers in education environment and then uh, fifth is standard pembiayaan so all uh, the fund needed to continue or to run an education in Indonesia is regulated here uh, and then sixth standard pengelolaan uh, how to manage the education institution in Indonesia and then the seventh is standard sarana prasarana everything that is supporting the education is regulated here and then uh, the last is standard penilaian or evaluation standard for teachers in Indonesia uh, especially English teacher in Indonesia we have to really know and master four standards of the eight national standards that is standard kompetensi lulusan or basic competence standard of the graduates and then standard EC or the content of the curriculum and then standard process the process uh, of teaching learning in the class and then the last is standard penilaian or evaluation standard how we do the evaluation or how we evaluate uh, the result of our students studying well now having known the eight uh, education standard regulated by the government then a uh, teacher must also master the permendik book or peraturan menteri pendidikan dan kebudayaan in this case uh, it will be subject to the current minister of education some sometimes uh, it is changing if the minister of education is changing the position just like what we experienced today so far the permendik good that we follow is still based on the previous minister of education we are still waiting for the permendik good issued by our current minister of education mr nadir makarim well about the permendik good we uh, as i told you before that we are still using the previous uh, minister uh, of education's permendikbud that is uh, permendikbud number 34 and permendikbud number 37 year 2018 why should it be separated? yes because permendikbud number 34 is specialized for SMK and MAK or vocational high school while permendikbud number 37 is uh, for elementary school junior high school and senior high school that's why it is different because vocational is different from general school now what is the content of this permendik boot actually uh, the permendik boot number 37 is regulating the KD or KI KD or KI so KI stands for kompetensi inti while KD is for kompetensi dasar or basic competence and core competence and for elementary school SMP or junior high school and SMA it is regulated in permendikbud number 
37. So if you are going to teach in those three level of schools, you have to really master the content inside the permanent book number 37. So you have to read carefully what are the core competence and the basic competence that should be taught in school, especially in our field, English subject. But if you are going to teach in vocational school, like SMK or MAK, you have to read carefully the permanent good number 34, year 2018. Because it is so various, there are a lot of branches of uh, vocation. So you need to really uh, carefully uh, read the permanent itself. So for the specific information, the permanent book is interpreted or elaborated more detailed by perdirjen. Perdirjen means peraturan director general pendidikan dasar dan menengah or pendidikan dasar uh, kejuruan etc. So here, especially for SMK, you have to really read carefully the permanent uh, perdirjen number 464 year 2018 so there you can see the KD or KI for English subject in SMK or in MAK okay then after we know the, the basic competence and the core competence of English for SMA or for SMK now it is up to our uh, us as the teacher or you as the teacher to be or pre-service teacher to design or actually to make a syllabus especially here English syllabus okay well uh, as you can see on the slide there uh, uh, the tables the empty tables for syllabus of English either it is for SMK or SMA or SMP or elementary school so it consists of six to seven uh, columns the first column is for KD or Kompetensi Dasar here you can take the Kompetensi Dasar from the Permendikbud or from Perdirjen so we don't create it by ourselves but we just copy paste from the sources, the regulation from the government. So let's say uh, for uh, SMK uh, grade 10, so you have to see in per reason about the KD for SMK grade 10 for the first KD. And then you copy that and paste and put that on the table. And then uh, the, the next column is IPK. IPK is not index prestasi cumulative, but it stands for indicator pencapaian kompetensi. So if the basic competence is that way, so teacher should interpret how is the indicator or what is the indicator that a student already achieved the competence, that particular competence. So we have to uh, interpret that in the second volume. And then the material is actually the summary of the material let's say for KD number one uh, grade 10 of SMK it is about self introduction so it's a, a summary of uh, introducing our self material and then JP stands for jam pelajaran so how many minutes of time allocation needed for this KD let's say one meeting or two meeting or uh, for meeting and then how many minutes for SMA and SMK one credit will last for 45 minutes for SMA uh, SMP one credit will last for 35 minutes and for elementary school one period will last for 30 minutes so we can write something like uh, uh, let's say two times 45 minutes so that will be uh, jam pelajaran. Okay, and then next column is the kegiatan belajar mengajar or KBM. Uh, according to the curriculum 2013, kegiatan belajar mengajar is actually divided into five stages, uh, following the 
method of scientific method ya yeah, like observing and then questioning and then uh, associating and then communicating etc ya so uh, there are five five m we call it five m uh, every stage of the, the teaching learning should follow the the five m uh, stages and then the next column is penilaian or evaluation are we going to use the written test or performance test and then uh, other things that is needed for the evaluation uh, are we going to take remedial class or are we going to take enrichment after the score taking that will be formulated in this column and then sumber or references so everything uh, we give to the, the student must be uh, having the reference like books or a website or blogs or anything yeah, that is supporting the main material of the teaching learning well as you can see on the slide there uh, it is an example of the field uh, columns of English language teaching syllabus especially based on curriculum uh, 2013 uh, as you can see there on the first column it is competency dasar or basic competence it is taken from the permendikbud or per dirjen and then uh, the, the second column is IPK or indicator pencapaian kompetensi so what are the indicators we have to predict what kind of indicators that is achieved or that can be performed by the student showing that they master the basic competence and then the third column is the material it is the summary of the material and then on the fourth column it is jam pelajaran as you can see there it takes 6 JP it means 6 jam pelajaran it means 3 meetings or 3 uh, three times 90 minutes okay and then the next is kegiatan belajar mengajar in this case we have to do the five stages of teaching learning activity based on 5M or scientific approach and then the last is the penilaian or the way how we evaluate the way how we do assessment on student achievement whether or not they already achieve the competence uh, designed by the KD in Permendikbud or Perdirjen and the last is the sources of our material well that's the example of English language teaching syllabus in Indonesia remember that this syllabus is subject to change based on the change position of our Minister of Education so we are still waiting for uh, the next issue of Permendikbud by our new minister so there is very possibility that the curriculum will have a change or an adaptation based on the permendikbud issued by the new uh, minister just wait and see so here english teacher in indonesia uh, should be ready to face this kind of situation that curriculum is changing based on the changing of position as far as uh, it is still on the right track so oh, we have no problem with that okay now let's talk about the assignment you see that there are some uh, government regulation that you need to master so I give you reading assignment to browse the sources and also to read and then later on you need to have a kind of uh, essay or uh, communication of your ideas so you need to read first uh, undang undang number 20 year 2003 about education system in Indonesia and then undang undang number 9 year 2005 about 8 uh, national standard of education and then if you are interested in teaching in SMA or SMP or elementary school you need to read further on Permendikbud number 37 year 2018 
the current Pramandikbut that is used until this day. Or if you are interested to teach English in SMK or MAK, you should read Pramandikbut number 34, year 2018, as well as Perdirjan number 464, year 2018, to give you understanding on how is the Kadi uh, for English in SMK and MAK. Okay, having read those sources, I want you to write essay again on uh, the difference between the the Kadi regulated in Permendikbud number 37 for SMA and the Kadi regulated uh, by Permendikbud and Perdirjen for SMK. Now you need to have a comparison and contrast analysis on those two sources. Uh, just highlight uh, how many items are similar among the two of them and how many items are different among the two of them. So this essay must be submitted on the scheduled time in, in our study, in my subject. Okay, I think that's all for our meeting today. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.